This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi everyone, it is Rebecca and Tara, and we are here with book chat number four. And I'm kind of excited about this one, actually, because I've got great things to talk about. But first, I want to see how you've been. I am very well. I'm very well. And yourself? Good. I think we should tell people that you and I saw each other recently. Yes. Yeah, really totally. Cool. We uh, met up in Sarnia at the Bookkeeper yeah. last Saturday, so February 4th. Yeah. It was super nice. It was really fun. Yeah, it was really fun. and. Yeah. I can do a little spoiler here. I think it's okay to do a little spoiler. Oh, yeah. But we, I don't know if anyone saw on the bookkeeper's Instagram account, they had our picture, which was really fun. And we invited Anne and Laura to be on our podcast in the future. I'll say near future, you know. Yeah. And they both said yes. Yay. Yeah. So I think it'll be yeah. really fun to chat with them because... Let's face it, if you're working in a great independent bookstore, mm -hmm. you have access to like the best of the best. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what books they bring to the show because I feel like they also have different tastes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes on their Instagram, they'll say what each person that works at the store, what their favorite genres are. And for some reason, I feel like they have very different tastes. I could be wrong. I could be thinking of different people, but. Yeah, no, I think they do. I think they're going to be really different. And that's the other thing I love, too, is that they're going to talk about probably some hidden titles that, mm -hmm. you know, are they could be newer or older, but things that maybe just weren't on our radar. So I think that's and, and no pressure there, by the way, if they're listening. But, we you know, we're not requiring them to surprise us. But, you know, <laughs> but it would uh, be nice. Yeah, it'd be, nice. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be really cool. Yeah. But yeah, it was a fun day. We would encourage anyone, if you're in the area, to pop into this bookstore because it's a lovely, really lovely little bookstore with uh, lots of really great titles. Like I found it to be really well curated and also mm -hmm. like a really welcoming, warm space. It was really nice. Yeah, I agree. The staff, when I every time I've been in there, the staff have just been incredible. Yeah, And you can tell that they are people who really love being there and they love their job. And... Also, they have a lot of really cool, like if you wanted like gift ideas for people, mm -hmm. like not even non-book people. So there's all kinds of really cool things to buy as well. Yeah. So anything else going on? Not much, but I will ask you before we head into our book chat, uh, what are you reading? What's your, what's your current read? I am currently reading my last Canada Reads book, believe it or not. Wow. I you know. flew through those books. I did. And I yeah. loved them. I absolutely loved them. But Hotline is the last one I'm reading by Dimitri Nasrallah, as I'm sure most people know for the Canada Reads debates. And I still have Station Eleven I read a number of years ago, and I will kind of review it, but I don't think I'll do like a full-on reread. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm reading Hotline. What about you? I have two books on the go. So my nonfiction book is Girly Drinks, A World History of Women and Alcohol by Mallory O'Meara, which is a delightful book, very informative. I've read one other book. She had written another book called The Lady from the Black Lagoon. So she writes nonfiction, uh, very informative. So this one is all about the history, obviously, of women and alcohol, their drinking of it, their making of it, involvement in government, patriarchy, in the drinking establishments. It's very cool. And she has great footnotes. I'm not usually a big fan of footnotes because I'm like, oh, that little print is just eating up a lot of space <laughs> and it takes a lot longer to read those little, you know, like, yeah, but she has these great little footprints or footprints. Look at that uh, <laughs> footnotes. And they're like, so funny. Like she's the queen of footnotes. So I'm reading that is my nonfiction book and fiction. I just finished um, Agatha Christie, the Ooh. murder of Roger a um, Aykroyd. Yeah. Now, that was the one that we mm -hmm. recently, Jeff had mentioned on our reader repartee, and he almost gave away the ending. So yes, can did. you just sort of say, was it a surprise? Did you love it? Was it, what did you think of the book? Oh, I really enjoyed it. The more I read Agatha Christie, 
the funnier I find her to be. She is very humorous, oh, and I'm really cool. enjoying that little bit of her writing when it comes out. That's super fun. And just to spoil it, no, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> 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 Having finished it, if Jeff had spoiled it for me, I would have been pissed. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that we yep. shut him down. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but it was a really good read. I might reread that one too. And I have to say that when you talk about her books, it makes me kind of want to do that as well. Like start reading them, yeah. but you know, uh, I, I might fun. read, a f I might, I might read a few here and there, like maybe ones that you really point out that are just, you know, really, really great. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause I've got so many other things on my list, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, anything else you're reading or just have you the know, one book at the moment? No, I'm, I am kind of uh, scars and stars by Jesse Thistle. I, yeah. It's a book of poetry, and I was talking to a friend recently, and she was saying how she reads poetry is is that she reads like one at a time and just like reads one and puts the book down and comes mm -hmm. back to it. And yeah. I thought, you know, I think I might do that. So this will take me quite a while to read probably because I think yeah. there are quite a few poems in there. But I like that because then it sort of forces me to think a little bit more about it yeah. and not just because I do struggle a little bit with poetry, although I know Jesse's poetry is very accessible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm kind of thinking about doing that. And then the other one I wanted, I want to read, but I am sort of started it, but our good friend Jolene, a bookworm adventure girl, she's doing a Tuesdays with Tony Morrison oh, yes. and with another uh, YouTuber. And just this week, they did uh, The Bluest Eye. And mm. I thought, oh, well, so I missed the deadline for it. However, yeah, me too. it's on YouTube. So I'm just going to read yeah. the book and then I'll go back and watch their yeah. their videos and stuff. So, yeah. um, so I'm kind of reading that one, but I definitely want to get hot, Hotline done first. Yeah. Yeah. I read, going back to your poetry, that's how I read poetry too. I only oh. read like one or two at a time mm -hmm. and then I just close the book. I think, I feel like some people... I'm going to say fly, I fly through poetry and with no negative connotations to that, but just meaning that they read it quickly. But I'm not one who can do that with poetry because I think I will then just try to fly through it purposely to get through it mm -hmm. rather. So it, by reading one or two, it actually forces me to slow down and uh, I think try to enjoy it more. And I'm yeah. glad that somebody had suggested that my friend had suggested that, but it's interesting because the only, I think seriously, the only full on book of poetry I've ever read was the one by Natalie Diaz, who's a Native American author here in the US. And yeah. I read that cover to cover and I really enjoyed it. But I yeah. now looking back, I think, boy, I wish, I think in the future, that's what I'll do is really read one or two, really think about them and, it, and just experience it more mm -hmm. than the way I did initially. So when you read that one, did you just sit down like at one or two sittings and just read like the poems, just bam, 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 bam? Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And and honestly, I felt really good about that book, especially yeah. because I felt like that I understood 75% of it. Like yeah. there were still other ones I read and I'm like, I have no idea what she's saying. And yeah. and that's my that's my struggle with poetry because I feel like I'm a pretty literal person. That's why I think I'm a nonfiction reader. And so when people have deeper hidden meaning that they write, I need the context of things. That's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And so because I can't have that in a poem, I that's why I think I struggle. I just don't have the mind that can grasp that sort of artistic language. Mm -hmm. So that's why it hasn't. I haven't enjoyed it as much. But I was going to ask you this. When I was at the bookstore, at the bookkeeper, I did see a copy of a book by Mary Oliver. And yeah. our friend Jen Bookfiend on Instagram, she reads a lot of poetry and she often quotes Mary Oliver or puts mm -hmm. her on her stories. And I wonder, do you, have you read her? Because I, I think I want to try some of her poetry. Yeah, no, I haven't, but I do want to try some of hers. For the same reason, I find um, she often is just kind of out there. Yeah. In the atmosphere, I, I I hear Mary Oliver and I'm like, I really should check out her poetry. So she is on my list to uh, to try. OK, yeah, cool. I'm currently reading a uh, Leonard Cohen, a Leonard <gasps> Cohen poetry. Oh, and oh, yeah. 
He's fun. I this one is from I think 2005. What's the title? The Book of Longing. And he is also fun, but I had I think I had the same I can say now honestly that I, I read poetry, but it took a lot of work over the last several years because I had the same thing like if I didn't understand it, mm-hmm. it just kind of uh, I had this block to it, but I've learned to let that go because there are mm-hmm. poems that I, uh, that I read that I don't fully understand. I let it go. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I, you know, I enjoy it. I tell you, Leonard Cohen likes women. He liked oh, yeah. <laughs> that man really enjoyed having sex with women. Ah! Yeah, that from his poetry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's what, I thought you meant like, yeah. oh, he was like a. A nurturing kind of man with women oh. and love the essence of women, but you weren't like yeah. down dirty like he liked the oh, sex yeah. with women. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I am, I, <laughs> that's funny. I'm sure he, I, I have no idea. I'm sure he loved women. Otherwise, you know, in like yeah. the essence, like you put it so nicely, but he liked their bodies. I'm just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> That is hilarious. Now, and it's funny because I follow somebody on Bookstagram who quotes Leonard Cohen all the time. Like that's, oh, yeah. I swear nice. to God, that is all he does is quote Leonard yeah. Cohen. And I don't know that much about him, to be honest with you. Yeah. And so uh, maybe that's why he does. <laughs> maybe. Oh, he has. And even like, aside from that, he just has these like little witticisms and they're just like sharp. Oh, the man's good. He's good. His poetry yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Have you started listening to the podcast the vinyl cafe pod- podcast i have you yeah i listened to the first two stories or the first episode with the two stories mm-hmm. absolutely loved oh it God, and i just I haven't gotten back to it yet but yeah i know oh. it's the best thank you so much for introducing me to him because oh, i welcome. i just think he was phenomenal just yeah. amazing so yeah do we have the name of that i'm not sure if you said the name of that um podcast I think it's just called the Vinyl Cafe Presents or something. I'm looking it up right now. Backstage at the Vinyl Cafe. Oh, that's okay. Backstage yeah. at the, okay, yeah. cool. So if anyone's interested in Stuart McLean, go check it out. Yeah. And don't forget, we will always add these to the, all this stuff to the show notes too. So you don't have yep. to write it down while you're driving, maybe. Yep. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I think okay. now we need to get into our book chat. Yeah. Let's get into the real book chat. And generally for our listeners, if you're new to our book chats, we usually give a a top three that we've read since the last time we did a chat. So I'll let you go first. And what is your, what is one that you've read that you want to talk about? I am going to bring a, the first one I'm going to bring is a nonfiction and it is Half Bads in White Regalia by Cody Caetano. Mm -hmm. So I think this book was published last year. So 2022, it's a memoir. It is his debut and I really enjoyed it. It's about his childhood in Ontario, kind of just around the Barry area, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing up, very impoverished. It was, at times, a very difficult book to read because to, to read about a child and his siblings going through what they had to go through. It wasn't easy. Having said that, he has a great sense of humor and it really came out in his writing and his phrases and the words that he uses. And also in the end, it's a book about love and family and getting through that bad shit kind of together. And this was because the parents were not necessarily there or working or something. Wasn't that the kids were sort of sort of on their own? Is that? Yeah, they were often abandoned at times left to their own there was I believe alcoholism was involved drugs I'm not sure but alcoholism Mm -hmm. and sometimes they were the parents were gone for work reasons sometimes other relationships pulled them away from the children as well so the siblings really had to lean upon each other to get through this but yeah sort of a modern day boxcar children yeah Because they were really, I mean, their parents actually passed away and they were on their own. But I always think about that. Anyway, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to equate a children's, simple children's story to that. But it made me, that's what I remembered about this memoir is that these children, basically, these young people were on their own. Yeah. Yeah. And that's essentially, now the nice thing about it is that the parents eventually 
although they're absent for large portions of the time, they're never completely gone. Like they're still around and in that circle and find their way back to the kids. Then they leave. You know, it's, it's a fraught relationship. It's going to be when you have, when you're a child and you feel abandoned and are abandoned. Right. But yeah. uh, Yeah. And this was on the long list for Canada reads, correct? Yes, it was. That's right. Yes, it was. Yeah, and this was one that I couldn't get, so I would have to buy that one myself. So um, I'll have to, because I definitely want to read it. It sounds really incredible. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. What about you? My first one I want to talk about is I follow The Poptimist on YouTube, Mm -hmm. and he hasn't, you know, it's funny, he hasn't done a lot of videos for a while, but he sort of jumped on and did this one that came on just like right after the first of the year. And he literally said, this is the best book I've read in 2023. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny. But he meant like he thinks it's going to be the best best book he read in 2023. And he said, technically, he finished it at the end of 22. But by the time he had done his videos for best book of 22, he finished it after because he Mm -hmm. did his video a little sooner than the end of the year. It's Anyway, sorry about that long introduction, but it's How High We Go. In the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. And I'm just going to give a little thing here, but it says, beginning in 2030, a grieving archaeologist arrives in the Arctic Circle to continue the work of his recently deceased daughter at this crater. And the researchers are studying long buried secrets now revealed in melting permafrost, including the perfectly preserved remains of a girl who appears to have died of an ancient virus. Once unleashed, the Arctic plague will reshape, reshape life on earth for generations to come. And I'm not a sci-fi reader, but he spoke so eloquently about this book and he was so high on it that I thought I've got to check it out. It is linked stories. And I have decided that from going forward, I'm going to read more linked stories. I absolutely love them. And I felt the same way about this book and each chapter each, or I should say each story, they they were interconnected. And there were times when you'd be reading about somebody who you had already read about maybe somebody in their family earlier or a different situation that they had been through. And just how it was interconnected, I just absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. And I made a comment on his YouTube channel on, on that post. And he said I gave away a spoiler. So I went ahead and deleted my question or my comment because I thought, oh, I didn't think of what I, I didn't think what I said was a spoiler. So I'm not going to say it here, but if you read this, Tara, I will tell you what I had said. Okay. (laughs) I will. I intend to read it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was just absolutely. And I mean, like I ugly cried in this book at one point and there were just so many, the characters really stood out. So I, agree with him. I think this is, I really do think this is going to be my, one of my best reads of 23. We'll nice. see by the end of the year, but I do think it will be on high, very high on my list. Do you generally like story, short story collections, or is it because of the interconnectedness that you really? I think it's the interconnectedness because I remember, I, I hate to, I, this is so embarrassing to admit this. I had never read a collection of linked stories before until a couple of years ago, we read one that had been on the long list of, for Canada reads. And I honestly can't remember the title of it, but I loved it so much. I just, I just thought it was so captivating how all yeah. these characters kind of sort of came back in different ways. And after reading this one, I went, Nope, that's it. That it's a solid linked stories for me. So I'm definitely going to start looking for more. And if anybody has suggestions for them, please send them my way. Awesome. Okay, my second book is In the Upper Country by Kai Thomas. So this just came out at the beginning of January. Fiction. It's also a debut novel from a Canadian writer. And this one I found really cool. It's set in the 1800s in a town in Ontario that is at the terminus of the Underground Railroad. Oh, this sounds fabulous. Yeah, and it's... There's lots of characters, but the two main ones, there's uh, Lencinda, who is a younger woman, a younger black woman, and Cash, an older black woman, 
who, and this is not a spoiler because this is right on the flap. Cash is an escaped slave from the U.S. And while she's in Ontario, her, I guess the slave owner or some, or someone that the slave owner has sent comes up to get her, to bring her back to the U.S. And she kills him. So that happens right at the beginning. So I'm not spoiling anything there. Uh, but the rest of the book is getting her story and Lincinda's story through them telling each other their story. So like Lincinda ends up working for a black newspaper, local newspaper, and is sent to get Cash's story while she's in prison. So Cash agrees to give her the story, but in exchange, she has to give, Lencinda also has to tell Cash her story. So through their sharing of their stories, you get this interconnected history of the black community in Canada and the indigenous peoples, Mm -hmm. which is a story that I I can't say that it's never been told in Canadian lit because I have not read every book out there, but it's not one that I've come across myself. Mm -hmm. So if it's told, it's rarely told. So I like that. And the other reason why I also thought it was an interesting book is because in Canada, we are so proud of the Underground Railroad, Mm -hmm. right? And we think somehow that brings us above slavery, but we have yet to acknowledge that we ourselves have a history of slavery. And even that um, if we don't have that history of slavery, we do have that cooperation with it because it was legal for American slave owners to come into Canada and take their slaves back once they, yeah. so, and you know, that's not something we, we have ever really discussed. Right. So yeah, it was a new story for me. So it was, I enjoyed it. The, I had a little issue sometimes with the writing. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth between the two stories and sometimes it wasn't always clear whose story was being told. Mm -hmm. So I found sometimes I had to do a lot of flipping back to see where I was and whose story. But for a debut novel, I thought it was very good. I really enjoyed it. You are reading some kick-ass books, I got to tell you, because this one I want to add to my, yeah, Yeah. I want to add this one to my list as well. So, wow, that is fascinating. Yeah. So my second book I want to talk about, and this is funny because I promise you, I will not go on and on and on about this. But I know 100% this will be on my list for best books of 2023 because it's in the top 10 of my life. Wow. Yeah. Do I know this book? Yeah, you read it way before I did. Greenwood by Michael Christie. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I have to tell you, there are a million reasons why I love this book. And I am, swear to God, I'm not going to bore you all with the reasons why. I, I will say this. I thought the technique of just... Like that opening image where it's got the tree rings and it shows the different years. And that's really how you're going to read the book. It starts out in 2038 or 2034 and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes back out back to 2034. I thought that was just brilliant. I bought the book. I'm going to reread it, which I I just generally don't reread books. Mm -hmm. But now that I know how it all played out, I want to go back and read each section And really do a deep dive because I think part of it is there are things in my family that are very, some things that just connected with me from, with my family. And it just hit me like, it was like a huge gut punch to my heart. I swear. It just hit me unlike probably like 99% of what I read. Right. But it just, it's in the top 10 of my, of my life. I just loved it so much. And one of the, I know. And one of the things I loved is As everybody pretty much knows, I'm not a big romance fan. You know, grew up, read tons of them, got burned out, and just have never gone back to them, really. The romance between Temple, oh gosh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. So stop (laughs) listening. But I need to say this. I I really need to say this. So, all right, so stop listening. Okay, all right, they're not listening now. They're not listening. The romance between Temple and Everett who it's funny because when I posted on Instagram that I, how much I love this book and, and I put a quote from, or I mentioned Everett or can't remember now if that was yeah. a quote from Everett. Anyway. I feel like it was a quote. Everybody was like, I love Everett. And it's like, yeah, he's just a major character now for me the rest of my life. But mm-hmm. the romance between him and Temple, which was so 
which wasn't overt. It was subtle. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of text about it. It just was this relationship ultimately. That is what I want to read in a romance. Like that to me, I just loved when they connected and I wanted them to connect and then to know that they, you know, had a, had a life together to some degree. That was just so meaningful. So that just, poof, that is the kind of romance I love. Yeah. When you read it, because you read it when it came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. So did it hit you as hard or not as much? I don't think it hit me as hard, although I really want to reread it now. But I remember I really, really enjoyed it. And way more than I was expecting to going into it. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that was interesting about it was because I'm, I've mentioned this to you, but I don't know how often I've said this on our podcast, but I don't really like to read a book over 350 pages because mm-hmm. I have a short attention span, but I read that book in three days. And actually yeah. I kind of did a little bit the first two days and I sat down the last, the third day and read 150 pages in one yeah. day, which for me is a big deal. Yeah. I could not put it down. I didn't want to put it down. It was, yeah. It just, and so that's, and then, and I said to myself, okay, it's 500 pages and if it's something I'm going to love that much, I know I can get through it and it won't, I won't lose interest or, you know, have my attention, you know, some shiny new object comes along and I grab at that. So. Yeah. Uh, is this the book you're championing then you think? for Canada? No, I actually still oh. think, I still think Ducks Will Win, yeah. uh, Canada Reads this year, because I do think that the theme of perspective, Yep. I feel like, and, and that's not to say Greenwood has a standard, you know, there's a lot, there's just so much you can say about perspective in that one as well. Yep. But I really just think that Ducks is going in a direction that how many times have we talked, have we read about a woman, fictional or nonfictional, in this way that Ducks plays out? And I just don't, I just don't think we have. I think it'll be really between Ducks and Greenwood, though. Greenwood, yeah. Yeah. And you haven't read, you haven't finished Ducks yet. No, I'm about to start it. So I just finished the. Uh... Agatha Christie today. So Ducks will be my next book. So yeah, I can't wait to hear what your perspective yeah. is on that one for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm so, very excited. yeah. Okay. I'm for my last, my third and final book. I'm totally like going completely in a different route than the Ooh. first two. Okay. I read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Do you know this one? No, I think I've not met- at all. Oh. oh, it's a cozy fantasy. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's just such a fun, lovely, big hug of a book, except Aww. it's not a big book. It's just like a regu- regular, yeah. regular <laughs> life. <laughs> but it is essentially uh, Viv, a barbarian orc who has made her living fighting and plundering, has had enough and she retires to a little town and she opens up the first coffee house Aww. in this town. And it is, there is like a little subplot of one of her former bandmates coming back, but that is like totally incidental because the whole book is just about her building this cafe and finding a family, finding a community. Aww. And it's awesome. Is there an assumption that I should know what an orc is? Because I don't know what an orc is, but oh. is that something people just know, like who yeah. read these books? Well, okay. I think... An orc, oh my God, can I, like, I don't know, can I describe, can I tell you what an orc is? I just think of, okay, have you seen the Lord of the Rings books? Okay. Yes. I just think of, like, an orc is just one of those huge creatures that's, like, really tall, kind of dark greenish or blackish, bluish skin, muscles, arr, maybe horns on their face or head somewhere, and angry and fighting clubs, like, I probably like people are like, that's not an orc. <laughs> this is my image. That's that's my idea of an orc. It's yeah. from like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. I could be completely wrong. It's close. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense too, because yeah. I've, I have I mean, I've heard the word, but that's why I thought when you said it, I thought, oh, is that, is everyone supposed to know what that means? Because I yeah. wasn't 100% I was gonna say, That's sure. a very good question, I assume. But I'm like, there was also, there's a succubus in yeah. the book. There's a gnome. I 
you know, I love gnomes. I love gnomes. Yep. There's gnomes. Oh my God. And other like little creatures. And uh, it's just, it's just lovely. <laughs> it's such a fun book. I assume a Canadian author? No, American. Oh, and okay. I believe he wrote this a couple of years ago during NaNoWriMo. So National Write mm-hmm. a Novel yeah. Month. Is that what it stands for? Something like that, right? Yeah, something like um, that, yeah. Uh, he wrote it then and self-published it, I believe, oh. on Amazon. Oh, yeah. It's like a, a success story because he self-published it. And people went crazy for this book. And it recently got taken up by uh, the publisher Tor in the U.S., oh. which publishes a lot of like fantasy, sci-fi, and speculative fiction. Mm-hmm. And it's now, yeah, so now it's like a published, I'm going to put legit with air quotes around it book yeah so he went from like self-published to out there is is that going to be a series do you think or no I feel like there is a second book I think I heard somewhere that there is a second book in the works yeah the edition that I got which is the tour edition had a short story at the end of it which was kind of fun too that was not in the original Okay, well, my last book, and I'm going to kind of throw a couple things in here with a point at the end. So here we go. Okay. So really quickly, I've been reading a lot of graphic novels lately. So Mm -hmm. um, just after the first of the year, I read Heartstopper and a shout out to Tara's uh, son who was on our podcast, uh, Keegan. And they mentioned Heartstopper and they said, you know, Heartstopper, like I knew it. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. So. (laughs) I, I was like, what? And so anyway, I asked you about it and then you told yeah. me and I watched the Netflix show or is it Netflix or whatever yep, it's on. Netflix, I watched, yep. I binged that, loved it. So I got the four graphic novels, read them. And I, I actually, the graphic novels are pretty simple. They were, they were good, but I didn't, I wouldn't rave about them. I think the TV show is mm-hmm. fabulous. And then of course I just recently read Ducks, which yeah. I, again, I want to, I think we'll win for Canada reads. The reason I, mentioned those is because I have been reading a lot of graphic novels and it made me think of one that I read. So even though I didn't read this recently, mm-hmm. I want to give a shout out to this book because okay. it is not even on Goodreads, which oh. is shocking to me. It was published in 2010 and it's called Stitches by David Small. And let me just, whoops, got to pull up my description here. Yeah. It is actually, if you look at it on Amazon, it says it's an editor's choice. And I had the privilege at a library conference in Michigan. David Small was there and he won. We gave him some kind of an award, like author of the year. I don't know, something. I can't remember. It's been a few years ago. And to listen to him in person was just astounding. But here, so let me just say what the book is about. And then I want to make one comment about it. So it says here, remarkable and intensely dramatic stitches tells the story of a 14 year old boy who awakes one day from a supposedly harmless operation to discover that he has been transformed into a virtual mute, a vocal cord removed, his throat slashed, and stitched together like a bloody boot. From horror to hope, Small proceeds to graphically portray an almost unbelievable descent into adolescent hell and the difficult road to physical, emotional, and artistic recovery. It is his memoir. Wow. And he is actually a, an author, an illustrator of children's picture books. And I knew him. I mean, I know he, he's written, I mean, illustrated so many famous children's books. And so when I read his, the memoir, it was so shocking that this gentle, genteel man had this horrific childhood. And I really recommend don't read anything more about the book before you read it because when you discover you know how it all plays out it's shocking Mm. bizarre you'll never see it coming and it is to me still to this day the best graphic novel I've ever read wow I highly recommend it it's still available you can still purchase it you might be able to get it through your library but I don't know how this man is still standing wow yeah incredible so I just want to throw that out there Okay, I've added to my list. Well, I think we've done some amazing readings since the last we time have. we chatted. Yeah. It was a good January. <laughs> Absolutely. So, we uh, again will have hopefully some content for Canada Reads. We've got a couple of people who have said they will chat with us, which we're really excited about. Yep. 
and we are working on getting those details knocked out. And we still have a couple more that we're hoping to hear from and have some great Canada Reads content before the debate is uh, held in late March. Awesome. Happy reading, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading. <laughs>